Hi everyone, welcome to session four of our English this week. And it's another exciting lesson, mainly because we are doing lots of short sentences again. So I'm sure I can hear some silent cheers happening around Purbrick at the moment because we like writing short sentences. So much fun, we can put so much expression into it. So it's session four of our poster writing and today we are going to be writing commands. What do you notice about these sentences? Get out, clear up the mess, eat your lunch. Hmm. Quite bossy, isn't it? Let's have a look and see. They are commands. They are telling us what we have to do. It's, it's not what you could do, what you'd like to do. It's what you have to do. You have to get out. You have to clear up the mess and you have to eat your lunch. Okay, a command starts with an imperative verb. What's the verb? I'm going to give you 10 seconds to tell your grown up what's the verb. Go. Just in case you didn't do it, I want everybody to jump, sit, run, stand. Okay, a verb is a doing word. Excellent work, everybody. And an imperative verb is a bossy verb. Okay, we did those when we did those instructions, so think back carefully. The bossy verbs, we'll have a look. So the imperative verbs here, we've got imperative verbs and we've got our commands. So our commands are the whole thing. So tidy the cloakroom is my command, but my imperative verb is the word tidy. Okay, because that's, that's the bossy word in there telling us what we have to do. Here's our command. So write today's date. And here is our imperative verb, which is the word write. Walk down the corridors. How many times do I say that in a day? Walk down the corridors. Don't run. There it is. So there's our command. Walk down the corridors. And our imperative verb is walk. Okay, so just imagine you were in the Great Fire of London. What commands might you give? So yesterday we did exclamations. What exclamations would you might you say? Today we're going to do what commands might you give? Okay. Just as a bit of a hint, sometimes you might want to use an exclamation mark for these commands because they might be, you put a lot of um, emotion into your commands as well. So for example, the people who are going to be in the Great Fire of London might be panicking. Their houses are on fire, their next door neighbor's houses are on fire, their houses might catch fire. So you might say, um, I'm gonna say, fetch some water. So fetch. Fetch some water, year one word. Spell it correctly. I'm going to put an exclamation mark there because actually we're putting lots of feeling into that. So fetch some water. We might say, get out of the house. Get out of the oops, house, year two word. So we need to make sure that we're spelling that one right. Again, I'm going to put an exclamation mark there because I don't think you just say get out of the house, would you? Say, get out of the house. And we might say pour it on the house. We could say pour it on the house. That might not be an exclamation mark. It might or an exclamation, sorry, it might just be a command. So pour it on the house. Okay, we'll have a little look and see what our steps to success are. So, steps to success, you use an imperative verb at the start of your command. Think about the commands you would give if you were in London during the Great Fire. Keep your sentences short. Another silent cheer, because we're keeping them short again. Make sure it makes sense. Good luck, everyone. Have lots of fun.